here we go then I'm going to show you how I've done this with Createx colors uh, Candy 2.0 system and you'll notice first things first we've got a phenomenal base here from Multimix it's their chrome paint and again it's just phenomenal for how for how well this thing's come out it's probably one of the key factors is getting that base as glossy and shiny as possible for the tequila yellow from Candy 2.0 uh, it's mixed at 6 to 1 uh, 6 part 60 50 1 part Candy 2.0 um, which I did have a good chat with Simon and Angela at SM Designs I think the last time I used the Candy 2.0 it was 40 30 that we mixed it with so I wanted to make sure I was on the right page uh, when it when it comes to doing this, this is not the sort of job you want to do twice or you want to get wrong. Uh, there's no nice areas to mask off of or blend into. It's it's pretty important to get a job like this right first time. I mean, it probably could be done, but you don't want to have to go in and have to gloss black it all out, start again, put the chrome on. Just just make a couple of calls, make sure I'm doing the right thing. I mean, in all honesty, I wasn't too sure about the tequila yellow. I was looking for more of a gold. So I was wondering, do you put a little bit of uh, grab or orange in there or something to, to bring it up? But Simon assured me that that's, that that's the way to go, the Candy 2.0 tequila yellow. Just keep putting it on, building up the nice light coats, and you know, eventually you'll get to a nice deep gold, uh, which is exactly what we did. You know, Simon's the man when it comes to this sort of stuff, so... His, his word is gospel for me and you'll see here I'm spraying at 29 psi sort of 2 bar I'm, I'm not going crazy the uh, fluid tip is probably about one turn out from fully closed and I'm, I'm not even using that I don't think I'm just being ever so light on the trigger the thing with candy paint is if if you mess it up if you get a, a big overlap or, or you get gaps you can, you can make it streaky it, it, it can quite have have quite a horrible look to it um, but it's not easy to salvage either you can't go back over it and try and drown it out as if it was a normal base color all you'll do is you'll make your imperfection or the mistake you've made darker and darker as you build up the paint so you'll see here I'm just being as light as possible um, and just gently building it up to where I'm comfortable you'll notice that the uh, the hair on the back there isn't uh, masked up because candy over black doesn't have anything to reflect against so I'm happy for the overspray to land on the black hair here it's because it can't reflect off of anything it has no color uh, candy paints are traditionally an analon dye so it's it's just a dye in a, a water based binder I suppose in, in this situation I don't know enough about the paint chemically all I know is if Simon says mix it 6 to 1, I'll just mix it 6 to 1 with a 60-50. I only need to know how to apply it, not how it works chemically. Although I'd love to. But, you know, back to the painting here. I'm just lightly, lightly, lightly working my way around. This is, you could say the second coat, but I've, I've put it all on in one hit. The first coat j dried basically instantly. Um, putting it on so light and this being a brand new booth as well that I'm in the air movement is so high you've got good flow around that so we're getting a nice you know a nice airflow around the part so it is drying quite nicely and again I'm not loading this up I'm not trying to wet it up I'm not trying to be a hero here you'll see that you know the whole thing that I'm doing there's no cuts there's no anything like that I'm just gently gently building this color up kind of eyeballing it to see where I want it is you know is this dark enough or can I get away with a little bit more or have I gone too far you know it's it's one of them just eyeballing it as I go along and it's one of the great things about uh, the company that I'm working with now photocentric they are giving me the artistic freedom to do kind of what I want um, and it's nice to have that that trust and he said you're kind of you're the painter what do you want to do with it? Um, I'd seen the multi-mix chrome base and I thought some candy 2-0 on, on this is going to be badass. 
this is going to a show in Germany and I can't wait for people to see it there you know I want to, I want to see their reactions so you can see here just making sure I'm getting in the eyes and uh, around the ears and the details and stuff we've got um, he's got earrings and a necklace and all that nice stuff um, not even sure what you'd call that around his head or his hair but I want to make sure that these gold parts are a bright gold a real vivid gold the um, the body it, it isn't as much of an issue for me to for full coverage although I did go all the way with it the same as the belt but the gold is going to be a perfect undercoat for the candy red oxide that we put on the top and I went with the red oxide um, I was tempted to go with the blood red but I didn't want it to look cartoony as, you know, as silly as that sounds um, it being a 3D print of a genie um, I, I wanted a more subtle red I didn't want it in your face I didn't want a bright I wanted the gold to be bright and the red to be kind of relaxed so we went with a red oxide and I'm glad I did it really really does pop it's not too aggressive it's not as in your face as the blood red might have been although to be fair I think the blood red would have been cool especially over gold and chrome And this is, I've just topped this up with the, the gold here, just making sure that, I'm, I'm only using 125 mil pot, so just making sure that I'm happy. And I think this is pretty much the final coat, you'll see I'm just going around the belt here, making sure I've got all the, those little dangly doodads on the bottom there. And I'm just getting a good coat on the belt here, you'll see it's really starting to turn gold now with this final coat. You can see as well just how reflective the multi-mix chrome is underneath there. And I've not even got clear coat on it yet. You can see how I'm just being selective about the those gold accents I was talking about, the necklace and the earrings and the belt. Just make my way back down the body with a nice light coat over the top. As we get ready to get the blood red out. Not the blood red, the red oxide even. I was just talking about that. And you can really see the gold now. It's really quite impressive. It's quite fun to, to do this with those giant glass doors there. The amount of people that walk by and they're like, oh wow, like what what are you doing in there? Um, it, is, it is quite an honour to be asked and uh, trusted with uh, projects like this. So I'm excited to bring more. You see I'm just raising the pressure there a little bit. Here we go then. Um, that's a good point. It was clear coated, the gold. I'm going to put a little tip in a little bit later on, which is the reason we clear coated it. So I'm going back in with the Autoborne Sealer 6000, uh, the transparent, just to give myself a good base for the uh, the blood red. Again, I've not, I've not gone back in and sort of prepped it because I don't want to risk any uh, any scuff marks or anything like that. So I've got the red oxide here. I've masked up the belt and the gold accoutrements that he's wearing. Um, and it's it's exactly the same thing here. I'm just being very, very, very gentle on that trigger, building it up, light coat after light coat. And you can see here, it's 
I was a little bit concerned that I didn't go for the blood red as it starts to turn like a weird brown to start with but I had faith and I just kept putting those coats on nice and light nothing crazy don't try and wet it up you know be, being anxious that is this the right color choice I didn't I didn't want to keep piling it on you know trying to bury the gold trust the process they you know the guys at createx have made the paint this way and it should be applied this way so just keeping the faith slowly slowly you can see it's kind of a golden browny tan kind of color but i've left this all in real time as well so you can you can see what what I'm doing. I was tempted to try and sort of speed the video up a little bit and but I don't want to gloss over anything. I'm showing you exactly how I've put this paint on. I'm not hiding anything. 60 50, 6 to 1 with your chosen candy 2O colour. And just building it up slowly, slowly, slowly. Again, I'm I'm not trying to get it wet. I'm not trying to do anything crazy. Again, I think it's the, exactly the same two bar or 29 psi, sort of one turn out on the trigger, and I'm probably barely even using that. This is the third coat just coming in, and you can really start to see now the the red oxide starting to take shape. You'll notice the lamp in the back there as well. That's in chrome. Uh, ready for a bit of abuse in a minute. You'll see here as well, underneath the belt with the gold that I'm just about to address. I wasn't sure, I was in two minds about blacking that out, just coming in with an airbrush and, and painting it black. But I was kind of thinking that gold overspray will lend itself nicely to the genie almost transforming out of the, the black chrome smoke. So, you know, I thought about it while I was painting and I just come in at the end and just, just put a nice light coat and, and to be honest it's it's give a really nice transition as if the, the genie was sort of turning red up out of the smoke but you can really really see the the red oxide there now on the body And again, you see, you see this this sort of final coat here. It's it's just a dust coat because it pretty much was the end of the uh, what I had left in the bottle. But the whole point is just just don't go crazy. Just take your time, have a bit of fun, relax while you're doing it, and let the paint do its thing. And I promise you, you can't go wrong. We're about done. You can see that uh, Merca pot there collapsed. Right, so I've got my uh, mixing pot left from the Candy 2O and a sea sponge. And the idea behind this is it's, I don't know, a thousand year old lamp that's been stuck in a cave somewhere. So I'm just using this as a, uh, just a way to distress it a little bit, make it look a bit old. Um, and this is kind of what I was talking about before. 
with the Candy 2.0, if, if you make a mistake or you, you get a line in it or anything like that, it's going to get darker as you put more on. So the plan for me was to give it some texture here, and when I apply the Candy 2.0 in gold, uh, the tequila yellow again, those spots will get darker than the rest. So it's just going to give it a little bit of texture kind of under the surface and, and hopefully make it look a little bit older than uh, like a brand new lamp. Have a shiny gold lamp that's been sat in a cave for thousands of years and, and not expected to be damaged. So that was the look I was going for. Again, same thing, 6 to 1, 60 50, candy 2 0. Uh, again, just nice light coats, taking my time, building it up gently. Just while I'm letting the uh, the genie dry in the back there. And you can start to see some of the texture there taking shape. I do have to admit as well with the this lamp here, I am getting a bit cocky and getting a bit excited, you know, being nearer the finish of this uh, project. I'm just going a little bit harder on that trigger. You'll see that the gold, I've, I've put it on quite quickly compared to how I was doing the rest. Which, you know, it, it hasn't hurt. But again, I, I would say to show some restraint when, when you're putting these Candy 2 old colours on. I was just getting excited because I was near the end of this project. and um, Probably didn't have the trigger wound in. I did wash the gun out ready for the next coat and I've just put it together. Although I'm not going full trigger but I am getting excited now that I can kind of see the finish line and getting this gold on a lot quicker than than I would have um, in the previous clips and you'll notice uh, the the sort of the smoke coming out of the end of this lamp here as well has caught some of the gold overspray and that's part of the little tip that I'm about to show. Now, what I've been doing was taking the 4011 reducer and like a cotton bud, and I'm just coming in and taking the uh, the candy 2O off of the the black smoke. Uh, it does have a touch of chrome in, the same as the genie does. But just by doing by having the clear coat in between, when I use the reducer the 4011 to take off the candy it's not affecting the chrome it probably would have but the clear coat is protecting the chrome from that so it was just it's all about speed for me here again I do um, work it is production obviously it's quite nice production and this stuff is a unique um, piece that's going to a show so but I still have to keep in mind that I am an employee here and I need to make sure that I'm getting this job out the door. So by knowing if I put clear coat over the uh, the chrome, I can be safe in the knowledge that when I use the 4011 reducer to take off that overspray, I'm not going to affect the chrome underneath. And that just allows me to move a little bit quicker. You see here about what I was saying about being reckless. There's <laughs> almost all all the paint is put on in one go. There's not not a lot of flash off time in between. Although to be fair, once I was done here, I did leave it for a good sort of 20, 25 minutes just to make sure it's fully flashed before I attack it with a clear coat. So again, this little tip, like I was saying, I've just got a tiny, tiny little bit of 411 reducer on a cotton bud and this was the reason that I clear coated the tequila yellow to start with I'm gonna come in real real gentle and take off some of the red oxide uh, from his eyes just to give that little bit of contrast he's got the his earrings his necklace his belt and that sort of hair bubble not even sure what you call it. 
but I'm just being gentle and just lightly, lightly using the 411. Obviously, I don't want to drip it everywhere. You know, that would be a disaster. Again, not an easy job to touch up. Just taking my time and removing the red oxide from his eyes so that we have some nice bright gold chrome looking eyes. I mean, it, it, it probably wouldn't have took much to mask out his eyes as well, but it was just one of these... One of these things. Having having a little a trick like this up your sleeve, it, it can save you a bunch of time. Imagine trying to get in the eyes there with the um with a bit of tape and then worrying about under spray afterwards. I just thought it's not worth it. A little bit of clear coat, we had time. And a little bit of forty eleven. So here I am using some Capsi clear coat. And oddly enough, I think this is a 60-50 as well, uh, which is confusing. Uh, but this is just a your standard automotive um, clear coat. This one's a bit more of a show quality, but it's the same thing. Two to one, no thinners. I'm, I'm not trying to be a hero and, and get a mirror on this. I just need that nice finish. And with the SATA X5500cc is going to allow me to do that. Um... I think I'm spraying around sort of 2 bar, 29 PSI. I don't have a regulator. And to be honest, every time I've sprayed this gun, I've got a great finish, no matter what air pressure it's been at. So I just decided I'm not going to put on a regulator. I, d I don't need it. This is not automotive work that I'm doing. I don't need... I just need the gun to spray nice. And it's, it's easy enough to adjust on the fly. And you'll see here, I'm just doing a nice light sort of grip coat just to introduce the solvent onto the water base. Uh, they, they, some, some clear coats can be quite aggressive, so I'm just giving it a gentle coat, introduce them to each other, the, the water base and the, and the solvent clear, uh, before I start really hoofing the, the lacquer on. Uh, I believe I give it three really good wet coats. Um which I'm not going to show you all the coats because we'll be here all day but just gives it that shine it's it's unreal you'll you'll notice here the uh the smoke on the end of the the lamp there's been tidied up like I was saying making sure uh, the rest of the lamp was dry uh, and just coming in with a 411 to to clean that up which just it just allows me to move at a speed Just trying to make sure that we're getting all around this um, the smoke here. The, some of the shapes can be quite awkward to get around. Uh, I've noticed with 3D printing because we can print literally anything. You, you they come up with some funky shapes and funky designs, so it, it can be quite a challenge, which is nice. You'll see how I'm moving on to the the jet just to try and get in some of those more awkward areas. But it's nice that you get sort of challenges like this to keep you focused and keep you uh, keep your eye on the ball. And you'll really start to see how I'm coming in with a wet coat. And it just brings that chrome back to life. Uh, you start to get that reflective quality from the chrome, but brought through the Candy 2.0 and it just... It's just phenomenal. I, I don't really have the uh, the words for it. The vocabulary to articulate how how nice this is. The amount of people again with those big double doors walking by, people looking in like, what what have you done to that? How have you got almost like a chrome finish with colour on it? And it, it's nice to to bring these techniques to a new industry. And it's nice that you know the. The 3D printing industry can make, like I say, basically anything you want. This is going to a show, and they thought, "What would be eye-catching at our stand?" And then they've said, "What what can you do with this, Paul?" And I'm like, "Here we go. Give me some uh, Candy 2O 
and some multi mix chrome and I'll I'll give you a I'll give you a phenomenal paint job. And again they're they were blown away. I was blown away and generally all round everyone's happy. You can really start to see the, the chrome in that smoke there as well and how it transitions into the, the red oxide. It's quite a nice blend. And, and that's part of the thing that I was saying. By keeping the Candy 2 as nice and gentle on the gun as you can, if I'd have just went and loaded it up there, it could have got dark real quick. Um, a bit like I was doing on the lamp. I was being a bit more reckless there. But you can kind of see that the, the transition is all, almost seamless as it goes from the black chrome up into the the red oxide and then up under the belt into the full color of the the genie's body I have to say as well I'm I'm in love with this starter gun it's just doing all the work for me I'm just pointing it and spraying it and every single time the the clear coat goes on as smooth as possible which makes my life easier and you really start to see there in his shoulders in those rear delts that chrome the chrome and the red oxide they they complement each other so well I can kind of see this being a, a thing in the future you might get a few more videos from CreateX and Multimix paints and uh, especially the candy 2o over the chrome this this the amount of colors that createx offer in the candy 2o and how they can be mixed over a base like this multi-mix chrome here the 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 color choices will be endless and i just think so some of the the real bright colors the grab or orange over this chrome could be quite a quite a thing some of the blues even the ultraviolet, the kind of purple colours, it, it, the opportunities are endless. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video and just really show off what can be done. I'd like to take the time to thank uh, SM Designs for their, their help and uh, the guys at SP Supplies as well. They're, they're outstanding. And here is the finished product. Just really, really happy with how this turned out. Really clean as well. There's, we haven't polished anything on it. To be fair, it's come out beautiful. Look at the gold from the tequila yellow and that colour from the uh, red oxide. <laughs>